Today I'm going to be walking you through Veracrypt, which is a utility that you can use to create an encrypted volume on any drive, and it'll essentially allow us to store backups of all of our core wallet data files or any other files really that we want. And in the event we lose our hard drive that our wallets are running on, we will have a backup that we're going to be able to restore that onto another system and not lose any of our funds, or more importantly, not lose our private keys. So if you're not familiar with Veracrypt, we can hop on over to their website, and essentially what it is, is it's an open source uh, disk encryption utility. But what makes this unique is that you have a couple paths you can take with it. You can do a full drive encryption, which would kind of prompt you for an encryption key on boot up, um, things like that. We're not going to be leveraging that side of it today. You can also encrypt an entire partition. We're not going to be doing that because we don't want our entire drive encrypted. We just want segments of it encrypted. And what they have done is they've created this container option where essentially what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to create a single encrypted file that will act as almost like a virtual drive. Once it gets mounted, we can drag and drop our files to it and they're all stored encrypted within that single container. So I'm gonna walk you through how to get this set up. First thing you wanna do is head on over to Veracrypt. It's actually veracrypt.fr. So once you hop on over to their site, head on to the download section, and I'm gonna be downloading the portable version today. Uh, there's actually no need to download the installers. You can just grab the portable version. And we've already got it downloaded into this folder here. So we're gonna go ahead and open it. And we're going to do English. And then we're going to accept their terms. And it's going to ask us where we want the files to be extracted to. And it's going to default to the folder that you're in. And it's going to create a subfolder called Veracrypt, which is perfect. So we're going to go ahead and say extract. And what you're going to see is it's going to extract all the executable files into here. And then we can say finish. And now if we go into Veracrypt, you can see we've got all the files here. And what's really cool about this is because this is the portable version, we can actually put this onto our USB drive. Um, speaking of our USB drive, let me go ahead and hop back on over to Amazon. This is what we're going to be working with today. So I went ahead and bought this. This is the SanDisk 256 gig ultra dual drive. Uh, what I like about this is it has OTG, so you can use it on a phone if you want. And it's got USB-C on one side uh, and USB-A on the other side. And that will allow you to plug either into a USB 3.0 slot. Uh, if you just slide, uh, this little slider slides that way for USB 3.0. Or you slide the other way for USB-C. And one of the cool things is it looks different from all of my other drives. So it's easily identifiable which was actually the reason I picked it up, 256 gigs. It's way too big for what we need, but it was only $20, so I went ahead and picked it up. Uh, link will be in the description below if you want to buy this specific drive. Uh, really, any drive will work with this process that we're going to be walking through. Uh, the reason I bring up the drive is you can actually copy and paste all these files on the drive, and that will essentially get you... Uh, a portable version of this where you can move it to any computer. This isn't tied to a TPM module uh, like BitLocker is. And so what that means is you can take this drive, move it to another file. As long as you have your encryption password, you'll be able to open those. And it also means you'll be able to put this encrypted file on as many drives as you want for safekeeping. So now that they're extracted, we're going to go ahead and open this Veracrypt file. And this is what you're going to see. So these are any mounted volumes. Uh, we're actually going to be creating a volume. So we're going to say create volume. And you're going to get this pop up. And this is where it's got the three options. So you can either do a container, a partition or a full drive, or the system partition, which would essentially be for pre-boot. We're going to do a container. And then keep in mind that you're creating a brand new container and any existing files are not going to be encrypted. You would have to move them into the container for the encryption to apply. And then you can do a standard or you can do a hidden. Uh, I'm going to do standard because it's not going to show uh, really until you mount it anyways. It's not accessible. 
So we're gonna go ahead and say next. It's gonna ask us where we want it stored. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my USB drive that I have plugged in. And we need to name this. So I'm gonna just name this wallets. We're gonna hit save. And then we're gonna hit next. And now it's gonna ask us for the encryption algorithm. These are all the encryption algorithms that they support. Um, if you are unfamiliar with these, you can really look these all up. Most of these are industry standards. Um, and uh, AES is going to be fine for most people. That's kind of the go-to cipher. Uh, that is pretty much the number one NIST approved cipher. And you've got, uh, you can also NIST ciphers. So uh, Serpent got number two. Uh, in the cipher contest, uh, right behind AES, and two fish was in like the top five. So if you wanted to nest all three of those, you could here. Uh, for me, I'm gonna just do AES, uh, which is a FIPS approved cipher, and they actually, it's really cool because they tell you uh, some information about each cipher. So if you wanna click through those, you can figure those out, and then there's also a test and a benchmarking, which is really cool. And then on the hashing algos, you also have your pick over here. So we've got Blake 2S, which is basically SHA-1, SHA-256 and SHA-512, which are SHA-2, um, Strebog, which was uh, developed by the FSB. So this is a Russian developed algorithm uh, that was kind of a alternative to SHA-3. And uh, we also got Whirlpool. I'm gonna go with SHA-512. That's kind of my go-to hashing uh, pattern. So next, we can say next. This is where we need to specify how big we want the container to be. And this is going to pre-allocate. So uh, for me, I know that typically wallet.dat files are around half a megabyte, generally speaking. And so we don't need this to be massive. Uh, so for me, I'm gonna, just going to do one gigabyte. That's going to be more than plenty to store all of the wallet.dat files we need. We're going to say next. And now we want to give it a password. And uh, they do recommend at least 20 characters. However, this can really be anything you want it to be. Uh, for testing purposes, I'm just going to input a password here and hit next. And it's going to say short passwords are easy to crack via brute force. They recommend using at least 20 or more characters. I'm going to say yes, I do want to continue. And now what's going to happen is this is going to um, basically generate randomness from your mouse. So you do want to move your mouse around the screen as much as you can. And then once this bar turns green, we're going to go ahead and say format. And it is going to uh, prompt you if you have fast startup enabled um, that it sometimes can cause issues uh, with Veracrypt volumes. Uh, this isn't going to necessarily be a concern of mine. And so I'm just going to say, it's going to ask you if you want to disable it. I'm going to say no. In the event it becomes an issue, you can always manually disable that. Okay, and then once it's done creating, it's Basically gonna say that it's done, hit okay. And then if you wanna create another volume, you can hit next, otherwise you can just hit exit here. And now if we hop on over to our drive, we can see we've got our wallets file now, but it's not accessible. So in order to put files in that, we need to mount it. So to do that, we need to come over, we need to select a drive letter. Uh, so for this example, it's going to show you all accessible drives. I'm just going to go ahead and do Z drive. And then we need to select our file. So do that. We're going to go to our drive, select that wallet dot that file. We're going to say mount. It's going to prompt us for the password. So this is the password you did when you set up the encryption. Say OK. And now it's going you can see it's mounted and now we have the Z drive. If we pop in here, we can see it's empty 
and we can say it's one gig in size. So now what we can do is we can grab one of our wallet.dat files. So to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull up. So for this example, I'm just gonna use my pigeon wallet. So we're gonna head on over to here. And what I like to do is I like to create a folder inside here. We're gonna call this pigeon. So we know which coins we're dealing with. And then I'm going to create a folder called Pigeon Core. Oops. And within here, I'm going to store my wallet.dat file. Now, realistically, this is the only thing you need to store. But I'm also going to store my uh, comp file. So to do that, we're just going to copy those, head back on over. We're going to paste those in. Uh, now, the other thing I like to do as well is I like to store the QT wallet in here. So let me go ahead and pull up the location where I have my QT wallet. This isn't required, but I do like to do this so that I kind of have um, a reference to the actual wallet executable just in the event that the project uh, decides to take down any of the source code or any of the compiled exes. And we've got our wallet dat file and we've got our pigeon comp file. So we've got all of those on the drive right now. Uh, now I'm gonna also do zero one coin. Uh, so this is an example of a master node coin. We're going to go ahead and put this one here. And then we're going to go to 01 core. So we're going to create a new folder called 01 core. And the reason I'm showing you this one is because this is a masternode one, we also have this masternode.com file. This contains the basically the config for our hosted masternodes. So that has the IP address, the uh, the IP address, the port, uh, the transaction ID for the collateral, all of that information is in there. So this is something good that it, to have. So we go ahead and copy those over as well. So now at this point, we do have kind of everything we need here. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a Veracrypt folder. Uh, actually, I do not want that in there uh, because this is our encrypted volume. We actually want to go back to our regular drive. That's not the encrypted drive. And I'm going to name this a Veracrypt. And within this, we're going to put our executable files. Uh, so first, we want to close out a Veracrypt. Uh, so I'm going to dismount. That's going to unmount the drive. Go ahead and close Veracrypt. And then we're going to copy all of these. Realistically, you don't need all the files. Uh, you just need the executable and the dependencies. But we're going to go ahead and copy everything. If you notice, that Z drive went away because I dismounted. So if I go into F drive, you can see we've got wallets. We can't really do anything with that because it's a logical container. But if we go ahead and paste in Veracrypt, just get this, give this a minute to copy all the files to the drive. And now what we're able to do is we're able to launch Veracrypt from within the drive itself. So we come over Veracrypt and it's gonna launch it just like it did when we had it on our own system. And we can select Z. We can say select file. And we can pick our wallets file here. Say mount. Enter our password. Hit OK. Just going to go ahead and mount that. And now we have access to those files. So as an additional test for this, I'm going to go ahead and take this thumb drive. And I'm going to plug it into 
uh, actually one of my ETC MC nodes and I'm going to show you uh, how we can access that. So we'll go ahead and minimize ETCMC. And I'm going to go ahead and plug it up here. All right, we have it plugged into the system. Uh, so this is actually a separate system, uh, mini PC, that is running, uh, as I mentioned, ETCMC as well as some other node apps. And we've got our E drive over here. And you can see this has our encrypted file, which you can't really do anything with yet. But if we go into the Veracrypt folder, we should be able to launch Veracrypt from the thumb drive. And there we can see we have it. So we can go Z drive, say select file. And we can select the wallets file. We can say mount, enter our password. Now, if we get back to PC, we can see that our Z drive is now mounted and we have access to our files. So what this has done is this has shown you an example where you can encrypt the files, put them on a drive or put them on a hundred drives if you want various backups of them. And then at some point in the future, if your system that has your wallet files dies, you will then take that backup onto a new system after you have already downloaded the wallet, or you can really just copy the wallet file from here over, um, you can open it, close it, then you can take your wallet dat file uh, and replace it. I can actually show you how to do that real quick. So if we ran this QT wallet, we're going to say okay. And pretty much as soon as it opens, we can go ahead and close it. We're just going to let it open. I'm going to say allow. It's going to start trying to connect to peers and it should find connections. Uh, right now we've got one active connection. You can see it's syncing headers. We can go ahead and close this now. And if we open up and we go to C drive, users, admin, uh, slash app data, roaming. Now we have Pigeon Core in here. You can see it created a wallet file. We can go ahead and delete that. And we can put in our wallet.dat file and our pigeon.com file. Hit replace. And now if we come back over and we launch the wallet again, it's going to basically have our wallet file of our primary keys. So here you can see basically all these unconfirmed transactions. And eventually, once this fully syncs, our balance will update. And we will have access to basically the full wallet that we had access to before. And that's it for this video. Just wanted to show you guys how you can leverage this to kind of make encrypted backups of your files and then how you can restore them. And you can use this a number of ways. Uh, really, in the end, all you need is you need a copy of Veracrypt to run, and then you need this wallet dot that basically this wallet's container file and your encryption password. As long as you have those three components, you're able to restore this on any system. Uh, it doesn't require a recovery key like BitLocker would have. Uh, it doesn't require you know specific uh, tied hardware or anything like that. As long as you can pretty much open this thing up in Windows, you are good to go.